The Chicago Portage National Historic Site commemorates the place where the Kaskaskia, a tribe of the Illiniwek, showed 17th century French explorers Louis Joliet and Father Jacques Marquette an ancient portage connecting the Great Lakes Basin and the Mississippi Valley watersheds, which over time became the birthplace of Chicago. The expedition was returning from its exploration of the Mississippi River when they were shown the portage. Yet, long before the French explorers came through, the portage was well known to the indigenous people who lived throughout the region for centuries. It was also home to ancient oak trees and was abundant with beaver, otter, owls, deer, elk, black bears, and other wildlife. The historic site commemorating this essential transit point and once wild land is located in the Portage Woods Forest Preserve in Lyons, Illinois, and is adjacent to the Ottawa Trail Woods Forest Preserve. The historic site deserves deep interpretation and exploration. The Chicago portage that connected the Chicago and Des Plaines rivers was a narrow seven-mile-long marsh, which would become known as Mud Lake. Formed by a glacier that melted approximately 12,000 years ago, the length of the portage varied with the seasons. In dry times, travelers had to drag their canoes through waist-deep mud or carry them over a longer nearby trail. However, when the marsh flooded in the springtime, Mud Lake became the pivotal link of a complete waterway from the Gulf of Mexico to Lake Michigan via the Mississippi, Illinois, Des Plaines, and Chicago rivers. The east end of Mud Lake was located around 31st Street and Albany Avenue on the near southwest side of Chicago at the north end of what is now the Collateral Channel. From the east end of the marsh, a portage trail ultimately led to the south branch of the Chicago River. The site of the Chicago Portage had been used for centuries by Native Americans as a connection from the Great Lakes to the west and was an important transit point. The local Native American communities did well, living along rivers and marshes which provided an ample food supply that made life comfortable year-round. While it was the Kaskaskia who showed the portage to Joliet and Marquette, the area was also the ancestral home of the Council of Three Fires, a long-standing alliance of the Ojibwe, Ottawa, and Potawatomi North American Native tribes. In 1816, the Council of Three Fires ceded the Portage Corridor from Lake Michigan to Ottawa, Illinois in the Treaty of St. Louis. In 1534, French explorer Jacques Cartier began the French colonization of North America. Cartier's three expeditions along the St. Lawrence River later enabled France to lay claims to the lands that would become Canada. In 1634, Explorer Jean Nicolet was the first known European to encounter Lake Michigan and what is now Wisconsin. In 1673, Father Marquette and Joliet crossed the Chicago Portage on their return voyage exploring the Mississippi River, and Joliet proposed a canal for the portage, which came to be in 1848. Initially, the driving force for European expansion across North America was fur. European fashion trends had created enormous demand for beaver top hats, and by the end of the century, European beavers had been virtually hunted to extinction, so the hat industry turned to North America for supply. At the time, American beavers were common, but prized for their thick, warm fur, by the early part of the 19th century, they had all but disappeared from the Great Lakes region from overhunting, and by 1860, the fur trade was at an end. The expression, mad as a hatter, made commonplace by Lewis Carroll's Alice in Wonderland, grew out of mercury exposure by hatters who commonly used mercury in the making of felt for hats. During a process called keratin, in which furs from small animals such as rabbits, hares, or beavers were separated from their skins and matted together, an orange-colored solution containing mercuric nitrate was used as a smoothing agent. In the United States, a physician from Orange, New Jersey, published a thorough occupational description of mercury poisoning among New Jersey hatters in 1860, declaring, Mercury should not be used so extensively in the manufacturing of hats. In France, its toxicity was kept secret for decades, and in the United States, the use of mercury in hat making was not made illegal until 1941. Hatters from Danbury, Connecticut, which was a center of hat making, were known for having the Danbury shakes, a symptom of the poisoning. 
Chicago is here because the river is here. Long understood that the Portage's water-based connection between the Great Lakes and the Mississippi provided the key to the interior of the continent, in 1803, the U.S. Army built Fort Dearborn at a high point along the main stem of the Chicago River at what is now Michigan Avenue and Wacker Drive in downtown Chicago. Over the years, Mud Lake itself was transformed when canals were dug, expressways were built, and Chicago became a metropolis. The first major transformation was the building of the Illinois and Michigan Canal. Construction of the I&M Canal began in 1836 after a bill authorizing its development passed by a single vote in the Illinois Senate and by a single vote in the House. The canal was completed in 1848. In 1900, the Chicago Sanitary and Ship Canal was completed, replacing the I&M Canal. And in 1964, the Stevenson Expressway, or I-55, opened to the public. The Chicago Portage Site Today the National Park Service recognized the Chicago Portage, which is owned by the Forest Preserves of Cook County, as a National Historic Site in 1952. It is located in Portage Woods Forest Preserve at 4800 South Harlem Avenue in Lyons, Illinois, about 12 miles southwest of downtown Chicago. The entrance is on the west side of Harlem Avenue, just north of the Stevenson Expressway, it's adjacent to the Ottawa Trail Woods Forest Preserve, which is located just north of Portage Woods on the west side of Harlem Avenue. Located in the village of Lyons, the historic site is also located near the villages of Forest View, McCook, Stickney, Summit, and the 23rd Ward of Chicago. As part of our Inside Out and About programming, we'd like to introduce you to two important native species that can be found at the Chicago Portage site. The first is the North American beaver. Beavers are found in 49 out of 50 states, Canada and northern Mexico. The only state without a population of native beaver is Hawaii. The beaver is the largest rodent in North America. Their diet is strictly herbivorous and consists mainly of the inner barks of trees, shoots, buds, and aquatic vegetation. While most beavers weigh 40 to 70 pounds, Large individuals can weigh in at over 100 pounds. Beaver are notorious for their dam building behavior. One of the reasons they do this is to expand their watery habitat to stay safe from predators. On land, they are vulnerable, but deep water allows underwater access to their lodges or dens, and they can avoid predation. Beaver are often seen in urban environments because they do not need much to thrive. Clean water and a food source are the two main factors to sustain a beaver population. The beaver's tail has multiple functions. It is used to swim, to communicate, and to store fat. Beavers have a unique trait in that they can continue to gnaw while being underwater. How do they do this? They have lips that can close behind their large incisors so that water can be blocked while still gnawing. The hair of a beaver is essential for their survival, but also what made them hunted to near extinction. The double coat of the beaver hide was prized by fur trappers. The outer coat consists of longer guard hairs, but the undercoat, sometimes called beaver wool, is what was used for felting and ultimately the beaver's downfall. This undercoat can be felted to be waterproof and warm, and was often used to make hats. Beaver are an important keystone species and can dramatically change a landscape. Beaver sites can cycle through forms over long periods of time. Pond, wetland, wet meadow, prairie, early successional forest, late forest, and stream, which provides habitat for an extraordinary variety of plants and animals. This is all due to their dam building behavior. Beaver can also improve water quality by slowing water down and allowing solids, natural or from runoff, to sink and filter out. These catch basins are an important aspect of beaver restoration projects. Research shows that some of the landscape of North America was shaped by beavers whose ecosystem engineering skills are being mimicked or employed by scientists to address all kinds of challenges. Beavers can reduce flooding, store water in times of drought, 
and creates salmon spawning habitat and natural fire breaks. Too often they are misunderstood as pests and are trapped and their habitat is destroyed by humans or overgrazing by ungulates. The next species that we will tell you about is the burr oak. The burr oak is a species of oak in the white oak family and native to eastern and central North America and central Canada. Burr oaks can live up to 300 years, which means that many of the oldest burr oaks in the United States were here before the country was founded. This particular oak species grows quite slowly. At full maturity, the burr oak can reach 100 feet tall with a trunk diameter of up to 10 feet. Members of the white oak family are known to hybridize, so you can sometimes find a tree with some leaves resembling a burr oak and some a swamp white oak. Burr oak acorns are very large and have a large cup with a fringe at the edge, which gives them the name burr oak. Burr oaks will be found in savannas, edges of prairies, and oak woodlands. Burr oaks have evolved to be fire tolerant and thrive in habitats which have frequent landscape fires. The burr oak has thick bark which can withstand fire, while other trees with thin bark will be killed by a hot fire. This allows the burr oaks to get the sunlight that they need to thrive. Healthy burr oaks will dominate a landscape with large branches stretching up out and to the ground. It is an impressive tree with a massive corky trunk and easy to spot in a healthy woodland or savanna. Oak expert Guy Sternberg claims that it is on the Great Plains where the burr oak is most appreciated, where it stands resolute for centuries against the elements that devour all lesser trees. Thank you for joining us for a tour of the Chicago Portage National Historic Site. Stay tuned for more tours of other important sites in the Chicago River watershed through our Inside Out and About programming at Friends of the Chicago River.